Welcome everybody to Hunting the Country 704 style. This is John McPherson. I'm the host of 704 Outdoors TV and we have a awesome guest today that I'm excited to introduce you to, Mr. Jonathan Peck of Medeo Creek Thermal. What's going on everybody? Yeah, so uh, man, I tell you, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Jonathan uh, a few years ago and it all kind of started uh, with a mutual friend of ours. Mr. Uh, Jason Brooks from Sniper Hog Lights. Ah, we've talked for uh, years, and um, we always trying to trying to line up a trip. I've been talking about coming to Texas for so long, couldn't stand it, and finally I said, you know what, we're going to have to do it. And so we had made these plans, and he said, you know what, you down? I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine, John. He's got a cool ranch, and we can go down there and hunt with him, and he's got all kinds of toys and we'll go out and play and have a good time i say hey man i'm down for whatever so and here we go right we met here at the uh the medeo yeah i still remember the day jason called me um i met jason at a, a hog contest and we just first started we were kind of getting into the thermal thing and it's probably been five years ago and I remember being at that contest, Jason walking around with doing lives the whole time on his phone. Oh, I was like, who is this cat with this live and these really cool <laughs> scopes and all this stuff? He had the lights and everything, and we got to talking. And then one night I was down there by myself, and <clears throat> I called. I said, man, that guy, I got his number. So I'm going to call him see if he wants to come hunt. Yeah. And uh, him and Ashley came down here, and <clears throat> we hunted. We had a good time, dude. I threw yeah. him out of the buggy the first night. <laughs> was, that first night that was, was the way to get dude. started. So it was so funny because <clears throat> I threw him, I didn't really throw him out of the buggy. I say he fell out of the buggy, <laughs> but uh, it was it's a long story. But it, that happened, and then we were walking back from shooting. We thought we were going to shoot some hogs, and there was some javelina. Right. So we turned around and walked back. Well, Ashley's walking back. And she falls, she trips and hits and lands in a cactus, dude. Oh. Yeah, it was bad. And uh, she has some, like, blue jean type blue jeans oh, on. And, man, wow. and they right on her, her rumpus, you know. And uh, anyway, and then Jason was so funny. He's like, you know, I own a light business, you know. <laughs> He's like, why don't you have a headlamp on? <laughs> but anyway, we made it through. And then after yeah. that, man, we just became really good friends. And I remember him calling me and saying, you know, you want to do a TV show? I'm like, well, who? He said, 704 Outdoors. I'm like, yeah, why not, dude? Yeah. Bring them on. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. You know, what, that's been four years now? I yeah. Guess. Now, we, now it's an annual trip. Yeah. It's an annual trip, man. I, I love it down here. I, I just, um, you know, I hunt all across the country, and I enjoy hogs. You know, as most of the viewers and listeners know, that is that is my, my love is uh, chasing hogs. And... Texas has always been known as like the mecca of wild hogs. Right. And for years and years and years, I've, I've kind of perfected my craft in the Carolinas. And then I was like, you know, I just, I want to go to this place that I just hear about just pigs on top of pigs on top of pigs. And finally it's worked out. Now it, it's just on the schedule every year. Yeah. We're coming, look out. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Coming down to the Medeo. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, if you guys uh, follow us on social media, you guys be sure to keep up with all of our Facebook and Instagram, TikTok and all that. And you'll see all the content over the years from uh, Medeo Creek and, all the hashtags actually you can see the hashtags uh, was it down on the media down on the media yeah, yeah you look at that hashtag and you'll yeah. see not only our adventures but all of jason's and yours and everybody yeah, yeah. that comes to the media and then we got the one hashtag is just not a very well known one it's called hashtag out of the buggy yeah. and that is uh <laughs> the one that me and jason did or actually jason did it but we always said out the buggy you know because yeah. we shoot them a lot of times out of our our electric vehicle you know yeah. our little um polaris you know atv right. but um, we we figure that's cool because it's it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, really and truly, you know, you, yeah. you know, out of the buggy, you know, and like see how far you can shoot them and stuff like that. Yeah. And just like last night, rolled up on that coyote, smoked him, and yeah. never looked back and just kept traveling to get the pigs yeah. because you know the coyotes don't get a pass around here. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at I all. didn't even. I, I was behind you and I and I was looking and I said, "What is he looking at?" And I heard you. Whoop. When I said, "Oh, okay. thump!" I was like, "Oh, we yeah, got him!" We got him. And then we just, <laughs> but he was so close to where we were going to get on those pigs that yeah. I didn't want to waste Couldn't any stop. time. Yeah, and keep it, going. It obviously worked out. I yeah. guess we'll get into that later. But that was pretty cool. Yeah, and just to let you guys know the, the for, for the listeners, um, so the Medeo is a ranch here in Texas, and um, it's laid out uh, kind of 
I guess there, there's what we call the white road down the whole yeah, so the white the border road is the oil field. Side. So when the oil field yeah. guys had the, some gas wells and stuff like that, that they maintain that white road. So we right. call the white road is just it circles around not the whole ranch, but the top yeah. part of the ranch. Top so part. if you're on the white road, you're just making a circle from the house up right. to the top and then back down. So we call that the white road. Right. And then, you know, um, then of course we got the bottom and we've been through yeah. all that. But. And so there's these great roads that run all the way through the ranch, all these different uh, stands. And so based off of, you know, the cell cams telling us the information, we, you know, uh, we have a couple Ranger EVs mm -hmm. that we just, you know, run from one side of the ranch to the other. I, I can remember when we first got here and they were like, well, we're, they're over here at a, uh, at this bait so we ran down there shot at those pigs and then we didn't even so much as get done with those pigs and they said okay they're over here at this other stand and i'm like this is what i've been uh, talking about <laughs> yeah. like this is that, a that dream first, come that, true that first we year was there. like man that's back and so when we bought this place yeah. it was shot out so i'm just telling yeah. you now the guy had just let his buddies come down here and, and they weren't just they were just riding around just shooting everything daytime yeah. i'm talking about you know deer or whatever so in texas yeah. you can ride around in your vehicle and shoot you know, right. I don't know if a lot of listeners know that. That's completely legal. I mean, not on a county road, but on your own private right. road, right. you can. And uh, I mean, he, I mean, we didn't hardly see any deer. Yeah. I mean, I can remember my dad telling me, well, "We're all the deer, you know." And, well, you got to drive real fast, and you'll see them run off when you sneak up on, <laughs> you know, when you run up on them. But now, as you see. I mean, have oh. you, I mean, like last night, I'm like, God, it's another freaking deer, you know. <laughs> now we got the place Tons going the way it is, and yeah. I think it pro a lot of that is because of the predator control. You know? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're trying to take care of coyotes. We yeah. had a federal trapper even come out here, and plus all the coyotes we kill. Yeah. And then the hogs, and then we try and maintain for the turkey, you know, the coons and the, the skunks and all the other oh, animals yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. My dad traps the raccoons, yeah. and um, I think he's already up to like 30 or 40 this year. Wow. I think he had 100 and yeah. something last year. Yeah, and yeah. we still seen them, right? Oh yeah, we still seen them. Yeah. And we were discussing uh, trying to do a critter roundup, which we will definitely. I think on the next trip, I think it yeah. will be a, a fun one. Uh, we just we were having fun last night, and old Beth she tapped out a little early on us. So I was like, well, we're not doing a can't split up in teams and, and do the critter roundup, but we'll do it another time because the turkey population since I've been oh, here yeah. has exploded in the last few yeah, years. It you really know. Has. Yeah, I mean, it really has because we only had, I can remember when we first got here, we had some turkey, but it just wasn't right. nothing like what you see now. And yeah. I, we're continuing, like, we're passionate about turkey hunting yeah. down here. And we oh, want, yeah. and if I, you know, if it takes trapping and doing all that stuff to get our turkey population oh, up, I yeah. mean, I'm a 100% believer in mm -hmm. it because I've seen it here now. I mean, early in the, before season started, you know, when they were really doing the rut, you'd have, you know, four or five here, four or five there. I mean, just big mm -hmm. gobblers, you know, just, and that's so much fun. And, you know, I just love turkey hunting too. So. Yeah. They've been playing on your, uh, oh. they've been playing on your emotions this trip. <laughs> yeah. This trip was tough, dude. I had my nephew down here. So, so before John and him came down there, my nephew wanted to, um, get a turkey and dude, they just, oh man, I was dying. Dude. And then I don't know if you'll show it on the show, but yeah. We had then me and John are driving around. We're we're trying to get a um, hog with a bow, and this freaking gobbler's. I mean, thirty yards. We oh, drive yeah. right up to him. Right he's strutting, him. and he doesn't even care we're there. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Then we had uh, we come down. What was there? Like three or four strutters on the same road. Yeah, we that one was like yeah. the one was running away, running and he'd stop and he'd and strut, strut and he'd look at the hens and he'd look <laughs> back at us. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding yeah. me, man! I was oh. like, yeah. Was and funny. then we set up and try to call hogs. He had the convergent game call, and he was playing pig sounds. And I hear goblin. Yeah, and I'm like, what? Are they coming to the hog calls? And I and I lean out and I look to my right. And here comes three gobblers in full strut coming to pig sound. 20 yards from me. <laughs> yeah. Just gobbling. And I'm like. And I had my bow in my hand. And I was like, no, they love turkeys. But I, I got to put my bow on safety. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, yeah, that was wild. And then what was it? La last night we were sitting there. It was, it was after dark. And when we dropped something in a buggy. And a turkey gobbled out of the tree oh, right beside yeah. us. And I about fell out of the buggy laughing because I was like, they are just tormenting you know? I told John, I said, well, at least you know where they're roosting now. I mean, they were like literally right above us in the tree, oh, just, yeah. I mean, 50 yeah. yards away. I was like, golly. Yeah. Oh, man. So it's been a, it's been an awesome time here down on the Medeo. But the another key is, is Medeo itself. 
Um, comes from, uh, I guess it's a creek that's here, but John owns Medeo Creek Thermal. And so that is his uh, optic company. And uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, let, you know, let the listeners know exactly what is Medeo Creek Thermal. Well, the name comes from the ranch, of course. It's, it's Medeo in Spanish, and I'm, I'm probably not saying that right. It just means Middle Creek because yeah. um, we're between two towns, kind of, you know, about right. halfway between both ones. But as far as the, you know, the business started off just as kind of like a hobby. You know, right. wanted to thermal hunt and sell a few scopes, and now it's just, you know, gotten bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. But absolutely. You know, <clears throat> we sell for IRA, Pulsar, Envision, Bearing Optics. Um, I'm missing anybody. I think that's about it. Yeah. But we kind of specialize in just, just thermals. And thermals, right? yeah. We did some night so vision. I think you did, yeah, you did yeah, night We did some night vision for a while, and, and I just kind of decided, you know, look, you know, we're a small company. We don't have, you know, a bunch of people or anything like that. So and just for our bang for the buck, just kind of stay with the, the thermal stuff. Like a specialty, yeah. yeah. So just specialty on the <clears> thermal <throat> optics. Yeah. And so that was, uh, you know, when we were talking, I think, you know, we were going over all the different, you know, regions and things like that. And we've had great discussions on, you know, the thermals that work here, thermals work on the East Coast, thermals that work up north. And and so kind of, you know, what, how do you start out with your customer to figure out exactly what, you know, what, what are they looking for? Because a lot of times I think they just see stuff on YouTube or something yeah. and they <laughs> think that's what they want. So they call you and say, hey, yeah. I need something. Yeah, I need this, I need that. And I'm, right. you know, but I, if I could tell the listeners anything, find a reputable dealer, I probably said that wrong, but, yeah. you know, yeah. and call him. And yeah. like my thing is I want people to call. Right. And we can talk about where you're hunting. We can talk about what you're doing. Because yeah. what's going to fit me in Texas is not necessarily going to fit somebody in North Carolina. Right. You know, I mean, y'all, y'all, you've said down here mm-hmm. 100 times your terrain is so different. Yeah, absolutely. The weather, you know, what style of hunting? Are you running gunner? Are you sitting in a blind? Mm-hmm. Are you, you know, just shooting off your back porch, at, you know, at your home place? Or what are you yeah. doing, you know? So, but, and another, another misconception is that, you know, everybody thinks that you got to spend $8,000 to get oh, a good yeah. thermal. And yeah. that's, as you know, that's yeah. not true. I yeah. mean, no, it's, and, and it depends on like, <clears throat> the, like you said, the style. And I think that's kind of what was, uh, um, kind of piqued my attention when you said, you know, well, first of all, I got to find out what they're trying to do with it. And I was right. like, never thought about that. I just always thought like, oh, I want a Pulsar XB50 or I want a tr- uh, Trichicon MK360 because they're seeing, people that they follow on social media mm-hmm. and on different YouTube, they, they're seeing those optics and they're like, I need to get that. But really sometimes it's not enough or it's too much optic for what they're doing. And that's the thing that we pride ourselves on at my company is, you know, the guys that help me is, is, you know, um, customer relations right. and, you know, just taking care of our customers. I've actually had customers call me and say, Hey man, I want, um, I, I just pick a scope, uh, a five thousand dollars scope, whatever right. it is, and he's. I said, like, "What do you What are you planning on hunting?" Well, I got fifty acres, and I plan on just sitting in my blind. I'm like, man, to yeah. be honest with you, you don't yeah. need that. Right. You don't need to spend five grand. You yeah. can get a really good scope for two thousand twenty five hundred. It'll do everything right. you want. Yeah, because you're not running and gunning. Yeah. You're just sitting in a blind, and you're only going to be shooting a hundred yards. Now, that's another thing too about shooting a hundred yards, but. Guys will say, "Well, I only want to shoot about 100, 150 yards," but you still want to be able to see what's out there. Yes, you know, you need so to know what you're shooting, what you're looking at. You know, <laughs> yeah. there might be something. You know, but I'm sure you probably also had somebody be like, "Oh, I want to get a, a, a Hogster 25, but I want to you know shoot out 300 yards." You're like, like uh, uh, "Wait a second. See, now now we're getting into <laughs> base. So like <laughs> a, the Hogster 25, the scope he's talking about, it's like a one point three base mag or something right. like that so with thermals every time you you start off at a, at a certain base mag mm-hmm. and then that's your best resolution and every time you zoom in it cuts that resolution yeah. in half so just like the other night glenn had his on accident on four power yeah and he's like oh, i can't see nothing he's i'm like, like dude it's all, looks like crap yeah. and it's like you're at like 108 resolution right now yeah. you know from 384 <laughs> you know yeah but, um yeah, so, I mean, there's just so many more, so much goes into it, John. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it, it's investment. It, they're right. not cheap, you no, know. No, and, uh, well, it's, and surprisingly how, how well they, they hold their value as well, And because everybody's always upgrading. So it is an investment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like, um, I feel like digital night vision and things like that, it, I can't tell you how many that we purchased for like guided rental guns that, that the optic itself was like an $800 digital night vision. Well, I bought it for 200 bucks. 
second hand. They yeah. haven't even had it on a rifle right. but one season because it just doesn't really yeah. hold like a, a thermal does. Well, it's just a lot easier to, to operate. Now, there's a time and a place for digital night right. vision. Like, I get customers call me and say, hey, man, um, I only want to spend $1,000. Right. I'm like, you want to buy thermal? And they're like, yeah. And I said, look. You know, Jason now he sells the digital with his mm-hmm. lights. Oh uh, yeah, he's got and, the uh, the Ronin. Ronin now. That dude, that sucker's bad, good. So, yeah, <laughs> for digital point. night vision, that thing's good, and I'm yeah. not hating on it. I mean, yeah. it's, it, digital night vision is a time and a place for that yeah. too. Then that's what I told. That's what I'll tell a customer. I'm not. I mean, you know, my thing is I'm a hunter also. Right. So I'm not looking right. to. If you're not going to spend the money to get a decent thermal, I suggest suggest going with digital yeah, night vision. Yeah, you know, yeah. for under thousand dollars, you can get that that Ronin from Jason and mm-hmm. the light. And I think I don't know what his price is on it, but I think yeah. you get the whole package. The package right? deal, yeah. yeah. I think so, you can yeah. do the sixty six LRX, or you might be able to do the Canon. I think it's sixty six LR. I think he's got a package for both of them. But yeah, because I, I think like the old, you know, I look back at the old um, when we first started messing with uh, digital night vision it was like the Sightmark Photon. And the Photon XL and the RT and stuff like mm-hmm. that. That Photon was a good scope. That Photon, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I actually got four of them because yeah. I, I and that's what, exactly what I'm telling you is I bought them used for my rental rifles because I tell you, you give a rental rifle to yeah, a, I know. a hunter, they're going to drop it. They're going to kick it. It don't matter. They're going to drop it in a box stand. They're going to, you know, and, and so I tend not to, put high dollar stuff in people's right, hands right. you know mm-hmm. <laughs> just because i can't tell you how many times i've gotten it back and they're like oh well the ir broke off the side and i'm like how in the world did that happen <laughs> it, it happens though, <laughs> it man. does it, it happens really does. a lot so I, mean, so I ended up so i got those and when i picked them up it was um yeah because everybody's asking me like you know well how much do you, can you get the photons i'm like man look on you know, you can usually for somebody who's upgraded to a thermal or something like that, or mm-hmm. has got a better digital night vision, um, like you know, they let's say they got the photon and they want to go to like the Ronin or something like that, then they generally sell them a couple hundred bucks, two, three hundred right, dollars, yeah. and you get you a little cheap, you know, kick around or right, something that right. doesn't really matter. But like on the thermal side, like the investment side of it, I feel like. Uh, a lot of the guys will grab them and they can upgrade and it's about at where they got them if not just a couple hundred off of you know right. the price. You know, so that, they really hold their value yeah they do and like i said you know and it, and that's the thing about when you deal with us you call me and you know i, I tell people all the time my hunting brain costs my sales brain money yeah. <laughs> because i'm too honest sometimes <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean i'm just like oh, dude yeah. you don't need that just yeah. all you need you know get this get that you're gonna be sitting in a right. blind get your feeder light and yeah. you know roll with it but yeah. now if you want to run and gun like like we do mm-hmm. on your tv show yeah you need to you need to spend a little money because otherwise what you're going to do is you're going to buy a fifteen hundred dollar thermal or or thousand dollar thermal mm-hmm. they sell them they're 256 resolution we don't mm-hmm. sell them yeah because we don't sell anything that we don't hunt with right. i would not hunt with that yeah yeah, so yeah, I don't, especially if you go up and you're like, oh, is that a pig? No, no that's we're just a, not that's doing it. armadillo at 50 yards. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I, always, I always say, I say, you haven't lived till you call through three, three barbed wire fences thinking it's a big old pig and it's just an armadillo yeah. right over there at 40 yards, you know. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, you know. I think I did that with Woodley. I think I did that with one. I think, I think the y'all humidity did. was horrible. Oh, it was terrible that night, yeah. And I couldn't, there's two out there, and I was like, those are pigs. Because me and armadillo with the round pig. back looks just oh, like a yeah. pig, but it looks oh. like a. You think the pig's about two hundred yards, but he's yeah. only about fifty yards. Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to. Oh him, yeah, you know? we, man, we yeah. did. I said, man, we put on one a hell of a stock on two armadillos. I remember that now. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That was something else. Yeah, that was back. On, that was back. Yeah. And then we got on them one arms. That was funny that night, dude. I had, I had both my hips replaced, and oh and man, yeah, my hips were killing hurt, me back then. Yeah. And John goes, well, we can crawl through the fence here. Or we can walk way. I said, Do you know how far that is? <laughs> John goes, We can walk down there if you don't want to crawl through the fence. I'm like, I just start taking stuff off to get through the <laughs> fence. I was, was like, I'm out. I'm like, like, I'm like, Can we get this over here and get y'all back to North Carolina? Y'all are wearing me out. <laughs> uh, no, man, I tell you, he he was uh, hurting. Uh, oh, what was that a couple of years ago? Yeah, that was like the second year. I think. Yeah, because yeah, hurting. he was he was hurting bad, and and I know the one night we were like. One more, I think. One more shoot will do it. One, yeah. I think. I think we got enough. We got enough for a show. It'll do two shows, but there's not. I mean, one and a half. I think just one more shoot will do it. And he's like, 
All right. This is after go. being down here for three nights, and yeah. then we went home, and I called a friend of mine, Kenneth Woodley, and I said, hey, dude, can we, you want to take us hunting? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I, I was like, man, after this, I'm done, John. Yeah. I'm yeah. done. Oh, yeah. And you, and, had uh, the, yeah, you went and had well, your hips for we, we, we weren't kind of We weren't really in sync like we are now. Yeah. You know, back then, yeah. we were only getting enough content to really do one, two shows, and I think yeah. we're doing a lot better now. Oh, yeah. Uh, kind of learning what it yeah. – me learning what – Oh, yeah. With what the B-roll and yeah, the storyline. That, that way the viewers, you know, they can keep up with the story and it's just not, it just doesn't bounce everywhere. And that's just years in the making. And so now, I mean, there'll be times, honestly, today. Today we were coming back from looking at some pigs that we filmed uh, doing some, uh, or the shoot that we had last night. We were just finishing up the, the segment on the show. And we are coming back and we're just like, you know, just coming back and all of a sudden you say, hey. You know, look at those blossoms on the cactus. And yeah, I'm like, I notice stuff. I said, my different. cinematographer here, look <laughs> out, man. And so sure enough, so we went over there, and I'm like, it was a great transition piece, something that we could use in the show. Literally, I mean, blooms of flowers with uh, bees the, inside the pickle, of them. Uh, Oh, man. Yeah, they're the cactus flowers, you know, pick, pickle pear, whatever they call them, right. you know cactuses but yeah. they have a beautiful yellow flower and, yeah. and there's normally some bugs flying in there so when i kind of caught up my eyes i mean you won't still i mean i thought we were gonna be there like two minutes i think we were there 30 minutes yeah. it seemed like he's <laughs> over there <laughs> just oh more pictures i'm like golly i got this started yeah, <laughs> yeah no, we're, so i was yeah i was videoing it a bee went in there and he was doing the backstroke and the in the pollen and it's the, cool the, where you can see that pollen on them too yeah. i mean you see it on national geographic but seeing oh, it in yeah. purpose in person is pretty neat yeah. too i mean it's and all so, over them, and that's the thing sometimes I always enjoy when people's creativeness like kick in. For me, I guess it's always been like the hunt, the kill, the introduction, the exit. And then when I go with people, sometimes they help me by they they're like, oh, check this out, like you did today. And then same thing, like I went with uh, Josh Sanders. We were hunting at Swamp Devil Outfitters, and we were there, and I see him out in the in a field, like looking up in the air, spinning in circles, and I'm like. He has lost his mind. What's going on? Oh, that's that, yeah. that musician you were telling me about? Yeah, okay, yeah, the yeah. musician. Yeah, so okay. he's up there doing, spinning around, and I'm like, <laughs> I said, he has lost it. I said, oh, poor Josh is breaking on me here. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, look at these trees. And then with the the wide view on the camera, they kind of curved over. They had a curvature to him. So as he was spinning and he came down, it was a perfect transition thing. Right. And I'm like, I, you know, things like that that get picked yeah. up. Because I'm thinking like, get there set the stands kill the pigs you know right, and then right. think of like the b-roll some of the stuff but a lot of the different like transition stuff it's always interesting different different points of view and i love it i eat it up man definitely gives a different uh uh point of view on it but yeah there's been many years you know of, of kind of growing and now you're right oh in the yeah mix we're, we're doing yeah. good yeah, yeah let's mean, go do some b-roll let's yeah, get, get know, stuff. Now, let's go do I'm b-roll like, <laughs> Normally we try and get get somebody down here a day or two early for you guys yeah. get here and we'll drive around and just have a good time just yeah. you know not doing any hunting just drive around get yeah. stuff ready and oh, yeah. this year I had my nephew come down we we're trying to do some turkey hunting but yeah, yeah it broke his heart you broke his heart dog cuz uh yeah <laughs> I was like we got to go roost the bird but we're going to take the thermal with us you know just in case yeah. on the way home and we go by there and there's five hogs at the feeder and he looks oh, at me and goes well, no. man we can't shoot no hogs <laughs> I'm like, no, brother, we're going to have to wait. I said, if we see a coyote, now you shoot it. Yeah. So if we see a coyote, you can, but we didn't see any. Yeah. And, I, and then, oh. of course, when y'all got here that first night, it was like somebody flipped a switch. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm riding around last night. We're it sitting was, there looking at hogs in daytime yeah. and all this other stuff's going on. I'm like, oh, it's going to be so good. And then yeah. it's just like, shut well, off, and, and Well, this podcast, this is going to go live uh, here in a few days, so you're going to have to look back. But for all the listeners, what he's talking about is – the eclipse. Oh yeah. Remember that's what we were like. It was a new moon, all kinds of stuff. Just was a weird, man. It was weird. Yeah, it was like the, the hogs woods were weird. The yeah. hogs all during the day. They were, the dog, hogs were active. We were hearing coyotes fire At up. Three yeah. o'clock in the afternoon and it's yeah. hot here. Yeah. I mean, it's like and eighty five and we're like, what, what what are they doing? Yeah, it was it, wild. It did have them messed up, man. I, I don't know. I mean, I can't explain it. And then, yeah. then we finally got a good. And you know, we had the bad, the heavy humidity and all that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, which and that's that's actually a great a great topic as we were talking about how to find a great scope for people. Um, that that just you know just struck with me the humidity part. The first part of the trip, 
it was tough. Bad like, first three nights. You know, the humidity really does play a big factor <laughs> in nights, yeah. thermal optics, and I think a lot of people – they don't understand that too, especially like sometimes when they look at videos, they're like, "Oh, that, that's horrible looking image." I'm like, "Yeah, that's 98 yeah. percent humidity." We like you started don't realize hunting, it was 90. Yeah, that the last few nights, the last night we had did have a good clear night, right. but um, yeah, and that's another thing too. But like back to the the low end thermal, right? Like if you live in the south, yeah. ever I mean everybody's gonna deal with the high humidity. Mm -hmm. So when you buy that low end thermal. On good nights, you know, mm -hmm. 50, 60, 70 percent humidity, yeah, they're, they're okay. Really good, yeah. But, dude, when the, the humidity falls in, you can't. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a safety issue. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that, too, because, you know, a novice hunter or something like that doesn't know how the animal moves and then make the wrong decision. You should never, ever shoot unless you're 100 percent sure. Right. It, right. I hate the word. I hate hearing yeah. it has to be a pig. No, it doesn't have to be a pig. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it, no, it, it doesn't. It, it, no, not at all. <laughs> you know, No, because there's a lot of times we've seen, I mean, you're looking at a deer quarter in a way that's just feeding and moving. I mean, if you're yeah. not paying attention, it looks like a hog yeah right and especially quartering away you can't see that neck mm -hmm. it's just like just sort of walking away moving and you're like and then all of a sudden you know it picks his head up and looks and you're like oh Dude, oh that's dang a, yeah, yeah that's that, a deer yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so i mean it's, it's definitely when you get in like humidity in the lower end scopes it's tough to yeah. identify and that's where you're talking about like identifying especially in any distance yeah 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 for sure and then when i when i say lower end scopes i'm talking like we we normally for a long time we wouldn't sell any scope under 2000. Now we have mm -hmm. one that's 1800. Yeah. And then we do have one that's 1600. Yeah. But the $1,600 one is strictly for blind. I tell the guys can make their own decision. Right. I mean, if, but I tell them this is, this is something if you're going to be sitting in a blind, you're going to be shooting, you know, a hundred to, you know, 150 yards or inside that. This is good. Now the other one for 1800 is a, a new company. I, that's a company I forgot. Rick's yeah. selling for them too. And it's a solid unit, right. and it's a really good little coyote hunter, beginner kind of. We call them entry level, right? You know, yeah. it's three eighty four, fifty hertz. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a really good deal. But there again, it's eighteen hundred and high humidity. Oh yeah, it falls yeah. apart, dude. Yeah. Like, but it, it for the money, it's it's really nice. So right. the misconception that you got to spend seven eight grand to get oh, in the yeah. woods is yeah. it, that's over with. I mean, well, and the good thing is like like. And, and for me, you know, I know because I've seen you do it so many times, but for the listeners, you know, when a when an optic comes out, John actually takes it out and takes it oh, and yeah. runs around the Medea and a couple other places and, and, and uses it and runs through all the different, even all the color palettes. I got videos over here, like I was going through to pick up videos for the show here off of the optic he was using, and he's killing hogs in every single palette <laughs> that's yeah, right, available yeah. on them <laughs> and i'm looking at it i'm like i said did you really go out there and kill a pig in every single palette he's like well i mean people want to know what it looks right, like yeah so. <laughs> some people like those different palettes and yeah. stuff like that because they're easier on your eye and everything else yeah so know? he was like yeah he said well some of them are pretty cool you know yeah. but he just takes every single optic out so when he's when he's talking to you he's really you know, you're, you're telling them from experience. Right. And what that's, you that's what I tell you know? people. I know, I know you can go to the big box store right. and, and buy or your gun shop, your local gun shop. They're probably going to have them. And, but when you buy from us, yeah. we have run every scope that we sell. Right. And we know – and we're going to – we try, and we're not 100%, but, like, I don't know how many times I've had customers call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I pick up the phone, they're like, oh, hey, what yeah. are you doing? I said, dude, I'm hunting too, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you're out in the woods with your son yeah. and you're with your friends and you're, yeah. you're having a problem with your optic. I mean, we do our best to, you know, right. customer service yeah. to try and, you know, walk you through it if we can fix it over the phone or or anything. So, like, when I say, like, if you buy from the big box store, I mean, right. what are you going to do there? Those guys don't know. Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of those salespeople, too, are just based off what the box says. Right. You know, I mean, right. The, the outside of the box has the features and all the information. Mm, yeah. They, but they've never actually even looked through one, so right. they couldn't even tell you exactly mm. what it can and can't do. Right, exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, just, just for instance, you know, when you're hunting in high humidity, you know, yeah. I've had guys call me and say, man, my scope looks terrible. What's the humidity? Well, it's 95. Okay, turn your contrast all the way up. Right. Or, you know, I forget which sequence it is. Turn your brightness all the way up, your contrast all the way down. I, yeah. No, it's actually contrast 
all the way up and brightness down right. but, and find a different level so you can see the animal. You might not be able to see the surroundings, right. but the animal's going to pop yeah. because yeah. That high, the contrast is way high. Oh, yeah. and now you're getting better humidity, you know, you, you even it back out, yeah. you know, just, just little things like that. I mean, like hard reset, you know, or whatever, you know, lost. Hey, my reticle won't turn on because right. they pushed too many buttons and yeah. made it disappear. Especially at night, it's so easy yeah. to do. You get yeah. up pushing yeah. buttons. And then you let your buddy run the scope and he's, yeah. you know, just mashing on all kinds of stuff yeah. and, I mean, you, you're thinking uh, even on a day scope, you let somebody borrow it and they change the eye relief, and you're like, "Oh my God, something's wrong!" <laughs> yeah, right. So now imagine that times three buttons. Oh, I'm fixing to throw Paul. I'm gonna throw settings. Paul under the bus right now. So uh, <laughs> your buddy Paul and, and he, yeah. him and Nikki got that scopes, and he's like, "Man, Nikki scope looks so good. It's so so badass right. and all this stuff." And Paul got the better scope, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, "What about the pulsar?" And he's like, "Yeah, but man, that hogster looks so much better." I'm like. What? what? <laughs> so I'm like, like come if he again? sends me a video, I'm like, bro, do you know what an eye relief is? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I hit the mic. I said, that eye relief right by your eye, twist yeah. that. Okay, let me get my, he can go, holy sh and I'm like, yeah, it looks a lot better now. And he's like, oh, man, that's so, I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. That, that that really yeah, helped. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it was, uh, I actually did a stalk with a couple guys, old, uh, Larry and Isaiah, but on their first pigs, and we stalked down, and I'm like looking, and, I, and I'm and i running the yoder that you, from you yeah, on, yeah. on the DNA, and I'm like looking, and I'm like, you know, the, the image is not looking all that great. I was like, man, I said, I, I have been putting a hurting on this optic. I mean, because we have been just running a gun with it forever. And I was like sitting there thinking, and I grabbed a hold of that focus and turned it and somehow or another. I guess I had moved it, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm like, oh, that's a lot better. Yeah, that works better. <laughs> it's just the little things like that, man, yeah. that, 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 that we try and provide, you know, just yeah. – like a customer will send me a video and I can see the settings, yeah. you know, down some, on some of the scopes, I can see why don't have, you don't need it on ultra, you need it on high, how right. much humidity you're running in. Yeah. But most time people, they, when they get the first thermal and they haven't looked through one, yeah. they don't, that it's still cool. Yeah. It looks great to them, but oh, I'm like, yeah. it can look yeah. so much better. So that's what we try and do. Yeah. That's how we try and separate try ourselves it, from yeah. other dealers, giving the little bit more customer service mm -hmm. and just, just being yeah. there for our customers, you know, not, you know, checking on them, make sure they're happy with their optic and, you know, and it's just, yeah. that's the way we do it. And, you know? and knowing like every, with you guys actually running them too, because I will say we won't mention optic, but I think it was two years ago. I remember like you had just come in from like hunting all night and you were like, yeah, we're not selling this optic. Yeah. So we're going to send it back. And, yeah. said, and, and I think you, the company, I, you were even having a conversation with the company. You said, I'm sorry. I was like, I just, no, I can't, I, can't, I can't give this to my customers. I know what it was, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you were like, I'm not going to, we're not going to do it. We're not going to sell it. I said, if you guys, and I remember you saying it, if you guys improve it or fix it, send it, send me another yeah, one. I said, I don't mind. But, you know, like after, but yeah, this I ran one it, we can't but do it. I was yeah. like, no, nah, man, I yeah. can't do it. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's that hunting brain. Yeah. Gets yeah. in the way of sales, you know. But, Absolutely, and, yeah. And and so I'm it, just like, no, nah, yeah. I, I would not hunt with this thing another night. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm going to try and sell it, and I'm not yeah. going to push it to somebody. Right. I mean, just if I don't believe in a product, yeah. we're not, you won't see it Mar on our yeah, website. Margins, yeah, yeah, margins don't I don't matter. care. Yeah, I mean, matter. I really don't. As long as the customer is happy, too. And on top of that, you want to make sure you're them in the right direction and that they're hunting and having a good time and, and that just uh again good customer right, service right. yeah yeah so that was uh as far as like the different optics and the different re regions and like i guess game animals too you know uh, as far as hogs and coyotes like there's there's definitely a difference on you know the style of hunter like you're right, talking about right. running and gunning but somebody like i said is just gonna be a hog hunter now your coyote hunters are you seeing See, a different variation of optics that so you're i'll ask guys i'll say well, are you a coyote hunter slash yeah. pig hunter or like me like myself i'm i like hunting pigs right. but i of course i hunt coyotes too yeah. but my pr primary thing is pigs yeah so i want Absolutely. a low base max. i want low base max so i get close and shoot multiple pigs running now coyote hunters say like in ohio yeah. I mean, he's hunting those wide open field. He wants a little bit higher base, man, because mm -hmm. he might have all his shots might be two, three hundred yards, you know. Right. And uh, you know, it's just 
you know, it's completely just different, different worlds. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. Now there's some optics out there that have low base mag, like, you know, like the one I'm running now on my gun, I feel like I'm good from 40 yards to 400. If I could hit anything out 400, you know, <laughs> but, uh, I, re I rarely shoot far at night. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a safety factor. Right. I mean, just like you saw last night with the cows and, you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. you never know what's out there, but there are guys that want to do that. And there's the optics out there for them. Right. You know, if you got, if you guy calls me and wants to shoot, you know, I want to shoot coyotes at five or 600 yards. I got the optic for him. Right. It's going to cost him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah a, but, and the, yeah. I guess the base mag too, and like the field of view, all that makes a, a big difference, oh, you yeah. know? And I, I think like, cause the first, um, the first one I was running was that Trichicon Reap. But then I jumped behind Sean's where he has the MK360. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what in the world is this? I was like, I couldn't, I mean, it's way different, you know? And yeah, I'm sitting there yeah. shooting at a coyote that's, I don't know. I think it was like 350 yards away or so, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, and then I, you know, you jump back on the reap, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, there ain't no way. I said, when it took that poke out there, you right? Know, yeah. Completely I think different. One, I'm not mind. sure exactly, but I think that's like a five and a half base mag. Yeah, it's yeah. Almost like compared to mine, one and a half, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. like sitting there, and I, t I actually took Sean. <laughs> I remember I took Sean with me to go uh, hunt, and and he hates sitting on a stand. He just right. he's he's actually a coyote hunter first. Mm -hmm. Hog hunter, right. you know that when they're when it's slow between call and right. coyote. So, mm -hmm. so, so Sean from DNA Firearm Systems, we're going out, put them in a the stand. Hog show up in a bait, and I mean this is a bait that's like fifty yards away, and he's got that MK three sixty. Couldn't see And nothing. he was like, he shot, and uh, these were years ago, and he was like, yeah, it was. I don't know if it was the head rear end. Because it it's well, with the five. That's exactly <laughs> the point I'm getting into, though. With the yeah. five and a half power, that's yeah. for like the guys in North Dakota that are or South Dakota, or like yeah. out in like Arizona that have like right. just wide open thousands of acres. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm getting in. So if you tell me you're hunting, you know, in Texas, and you say you want a five and a half base mag, I'm gonna do you crazy yeah. because at at, at 150 yards, that's like all you're gonna see, just see the whole. It's, it's gonna fill the screen. You fill the screen, and yeah. you have no idea. Like to, like the hunt we did last night with the cows, oh, like yeah. the cows over to the left. If you didn't have that base mag where you had that field of view, you would ever knew that the cows. It were could have been real bad. Crossing, they were coming. We were I knew they shot. were coming, yeah. and I could see them. And yeah. and that's why I was like, well, "Hurry up, John! Yeah. You know, <laughs> so we got to go." <laughs> and you, I mean, if you watch the show, you'll see they crossed right after right. we shoot. They cross, yeah. and I knew they were there. There are yeah. cows, you know. Yeah, and they were. Oh yeah, we had plenty of space. They weren't quite even up yet, actually. Yeah. So just so you know, viewers don't think like we were shooting in front of walking cows. They were actually laying down. Yeah. But he started to see them get on their knees like they're about to stand up when we took the shot, and then they walked past. But then again, if you didn't have that field of view, you never even knew they were right. there. Because right. sure. where we were standing, you couldn't have seen it because the little head of trees right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you never mm -hmm. even noticed that was there. But that was uh, uh, yeah. When you guys watch us, so season ten. You'll see us uh, here at the Medeo, and we had a heck of a shoot. We just filmed a couple of episodes, called a wild hog in with the convergent game calls. We've done that. That's been we've done that quite a bit. We did. We did that has been exciting. Last year and this year. Yeah, we last had year. Man, I called these hogs into John. I put him in 50 yards, and he wouldn't let the – wouldn't shoot. I don't know if he's scared or what was going on, dude. I was like, golly. Yeah, I'm sitting there with the bow, and I, we, we called in two pissed-off sows. Oh, she was a grunt, and she was mad. And I was like, I can't even draw back. I can't even draw back. <laughs> so. I was like, man, come on, dude, let it rip. I was, I was, I was kind of trying to stand behind him, and I was like, man, yeah. they're going to come up around my side. I don't know what I'm going to do. but Oh, Lord. Yeah, well, it was all right. Well, guys, we've had an absolute blast sitting here talking with John uh, from Medeo Creek Thermal. Be sure to go check out all of his social media channels. Um, We've got uh, Facebook, Instagram now. It's MCT Outdoors. No, the website's Medeo Creek Thermal right. now. Yeah. But I mean, in it, Instagram is MCT. No, it's yeah. everything. It's all everything now is, now is Medeo yeah, Creek Thermal. Yeah, I changed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So all, that was yeah, actually yeah. we were working on that a few Remember, years ago. Yeah. So he kept asking me, he's like, ah, I'm kind of thinking about doing MCT. And I'm like, well, if everything's Medeo Creek, you know, so it was kind yeah, of like. Yeah, I kind of started, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. And luckily right. I had people like John and Jason right. to help me. Right. I was mean, so telling John earlier, you know, me and Jason were sitting in this kitchen that we're in. We're in the house we're doing our video in and 
I remember Jason, he's looking at my Facebook page, and he's like, man, what are you doing on Facebook? I was like, bro, I have no idea. <laughs> I said, I, you <laughs> know, trying to figure it out, I yeah. never had any social media or yeah. did anything like that until right. I started this business. And now, yeah. of course, we got Facebook, Instagram, you know, yeah. YouTube. I don't do anything on any other platforms. But right, yeah. Yeah, but, you know. And Those are the main ones. You, you guys, the they ones. helped me out and yeah. kind of yeah. got me going in the right way, watching yeah. you guys do stuff, and it's greatly yeah. appreciated, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, guys, be, be sure to go to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and you can see all the different videos, and that's the cool thing because John actually goes out with these optics. He films the hunts that he's actually doing, so you guys will actually be able to see. And then he's also, he does voiceovers and talks about, the conditions, yeah. you know, that yeah, way they definitely. know the, the conditions that's happening and he kind of walks you through the optic and everything. And there's tons of videos on there that shows all the different uh, optics. So if it's something that you're actually interested in and looking for, be sure to look at his, all of his pages. And I'm sure if there's an optic that you're interested in, he has a video about it. So, yeah. and if not, you could always call him, um, you know, where, where, where they can, can they reach you? Yeah, you can uh, reach me at 979-885-9610. That's actually yeah. my cell phone. Yeah, that's his personal Yeah, that's cell my phone. personal line. Um, just do all my business right there. You know, so email. A little, a little slower yeah. for the listeners here. Right, 979-885-9610. There you go, guys. And it's all over social media. I mean, yeah. but yeah. And then another thing I want to mention, too, there, there are a lot of thermal manufacturers out there. But we only sell for the – we we decided to settle on our the ones that we're selling for right. because of the way they handle every thermal optics going to have a problem right every manufacturer is, at the end of the day is still a computer right and how they handle it is what we judge how we pick our manufacturers because right. we want them to take care of our guys yeah. you know it's just oh absolutely and I think it, and I know you know again you know remain nameless I know there was one company that that had you know subpar customer service on some of the op- optics and now you don't you don't no. offer them anymore you know no, so no. that was that was another thing i was like yeah i mean some of the units were great yeah they were, but, but i mean yeah. unfortunately some of them that that didn't didn't kind of pan out and then they just didn't come through where they right. should have. They they just, could have been yeah. an easy fix you know because yeah, you know guys get upset yeah. they spend that kind of money and they think you know i have to remind people sometimes hey i did not build that optic <laughs> <laughs> you know i just sell them you know but we try and pick yeah. the, the the right manufacturers going to take care of our customer yeah. and, and that's another thing with our customers like I'll say, okay, well, we need to go through their process, the manufacturer's process, and get an RA. And if you have a problem, yeah. then you call me. And yeah. then I'll start, you know, in yeah. on the, on the in call on, and yeah. try and see if I can say, hey, what's going on with this right. guy? Why is he not getting taken care of? Yeah. And, I, you know, in the manufacturers, the most part, they're trying to do a good, right. good, do a good job, you yeah. know. Especially all the ones that you're dealing with. Right, yeah, yeah. They've, they've already gone through that process, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, uh-oh, John's calling me. <laughs> right, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, sometimes they're like, but it's, it, normally it's just something that just fell through the cracks. And right. when you bring attention to it, they're going to take care of it because oh, yeah. they're good companies, yeah. you know. All, all, you know, like I said, you know, Pulsar, Envision, you know, IRA, Ricks, and Bearing Optics. I mean, they're all great companies, you know. But, you know, you can go online, and I'm sure you're going to find a bad review somewhere. But, you yeah. know, everybody makes mistakes. But, right. you know, for the most part, they handle their business. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's an important part. And it's just a personal experience with, you know, the sale of the company and mm-hmm. the, the optic and things. So, so definitely, guys, be sure to uh, go again, all the uh, social channels for Medeo Creek Thermal. And, uh, and check them out. And if you guys have any questions for optics, uh, um, I personally run the Medeo Creek uh, optic that I've got on my DNA firearms right now and have had an absolute blast. And Beth actually was running one um, this week. She was running that Pulsar. Yeah, the new Pulsar yeah. SG50. That's a yeah. solid unit. And I asked her if she, I was like, I was like, how do you like that? She's like, not as bad as that YSL purse. <laughs> yeah right that was funny <laughs> so, so I'll just borrow John's I'll just borrow her videos yeah <laughs> so, so we had a blast and she actually smoked a couple hogs and uh, and it was great and I mean honestly like we, we put it on a rifle went to the range John had it sighted in like two minutes yeah, and we, we were killing in just a couple of hours so had a ball but guys we appreciate you listening to another uh, podcast of uh Hunt in the Country 704 style with 704 Outdoors. And uh, you guys check in. We'll have some more great guests. And uh, be sure to follow all the 704 Outdoors uh, social media channels. Um, We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, you name it, we got it. And tune in to the 704 Outdoors TV show every Tuesday nights at 730, Saturday nights at 10, and it reruns 
five or six times throughout the week, but those are our two uh, anchor air times. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, John. All right, man. Thanks. I enjoyed it. <laughs>